I want you to go to Genesis tonight, chapter 12, chapter 17, chapter 18, chapter 21. I just want to, I just want to bring you to date on this, and then I want to read a little passage in Romans. I have such an affinity for New Testament, I, I just can't escape it. But, but in Genesis chapter 12, it, it begins, it's the, it's, it's the Lord striking a covenant with Abraham. And verse 1 says, just a few verses and I'll read. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. I want you to notice now that God is the only one I know who will ask you to leave something solid and concrete for something he will show you. Just leave. Now, where are we going? No, just leave. And I will show you. Which means you can be in the will of God and not know where you're going. Oh yes, you, you can be in his will and, and not know. <laughs> and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abraham was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Interesting. In 17, verse uh, uh, Genesis chapter 17 now, and just, just, just a little bit here, uh, and verse one, and when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, that's 24 years later, <laughs> The Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham for a father of many nations have I made thee? I've already done it. I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger <laughs> all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God all right in 18 of Genesis about 9 and of course now Abraham's getting older all kinds of stuff happening by 17 God had to renew the covenant because doing some other things and then he's not treating his wife right because he's putting her in somebody else's bed and then the Lord have mercy and then he's uh, lots down in, in Sodom and all kinds of things so he's on his way the Lord is with a couple of angels three angels to do something down in Sodom and uh, he stops by Abraham because he's giving Abraham the privilege to discuss it with him what he's going to do in Sodom and by verse 9 he his wife now Abraham's wife Sarah goes out to make something because the Lord comes by and Abraham's being hospitable he's entertaining angels verse 9 and and they said unto him where is Sarah thy wife and he said behold in the tent and he said I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life and lo Sarah thy wife shall have a son <laughs> and Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age as if we didn't know 
and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. If God said you laughed, thank you. Amen. Nay, thou didst laugh. Now, in 21, Sarah is now a hundred years old. When his son Isaac was born unto him, and Sarah said in verse 6 of 21, God hath made me to laugh so that all that hear <laughs> will laugh with me. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. It's marvelous, isn't it? Uh, I, I want you to look at somebody and tell them, uh, God's going to make you laugh. Uh, now look at your neighbor on the other side and say, are you laughing yet? Romans 4 16 says therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace that the end the promise might be sure to all the seed not to that only which is of the law but to that also which is of faith of Abraham who is the father of us all I want to talk a little bit tonight about receiving a ridiculous blessing touch somebody and say I need a ridiculous Blessing. It is interesting to to actually be the recipient of what God decides to do. And I, I wonder, have you ever just thought about being the recipient of what God decides to do? Because the significance of being the recipient of what God decides to do is that he brings you into the knowledge of him. And, and it, it would seem that that, that would be a taken-for-granted kind of an issue, but you have to be a recipient in order to come into a revelatory knowledge of God. Uh, we, might be, we might be skirting the deep end here for a minute. Uh, I have to be able and be well prepared to understand divine revelation within my own everyday life history. Because nobody in this room is going to be ushered out of your everyday historical existence and have anything to do with God. I have to see God within the parameters or within the walls of my own house. 
I have to experience God within the walls of my own job. I literally have to experience God not just in the outward expression of worship, but I have to experience God in the inward motivation and inspiration that opens my mouth to praise Him. Because He can easily say that they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Because oftentimes, when a person does not experience God on a day-to-day -day basis, it's easy to become religious and not be spiritual. Uh, uh, I'm treading the ground lightly, and, and, and I'll carry you with me. It, it, so then, it's God then who has to reveal himself. Now, uh, I, would, I would deal with the word reveal as opposed to the word recognize because God is never recognized. He's always revealed. And, and it's, it's critical and it's, it's very, and it's a great distinction between the two because if you were to look at Jesus, for instance, who happened to be the expressed image of God, you would wonder to yourself, how could they miss who he was? And oftentimes people look at you in your ordinariness and they cannot detect the power of anointing that runs within you because your anointing is never recognized it's always revealed. Oh, I wish you'd understand this. Uh, let me give you an example. Now, if you're going to pick a mate as a child of God, don't pick a mate because of outward procritude. You have to allow your spirit to roam in the vicinity of the pulchritude and see can you discern the spirit that's in the package of the body I, I, I hope you're with me here uh, you see because oftentimes you can have a wonderful package and not have anything in it It is impossible then, simply, it is impossible, yes, to understand what is going on in spirit if there is no revelation. And so you can recognize pulchritude and you can recognize outward appearances, but in order to get into the depth of the spirit, there has to be revelation. Oh, oh God. You see, one of the things that we have to learn is that the saint must not walk by situation, but the saint must walk by revelation. So that means I can rejoice in the middle of an awful situation because I don't rejoice by situation, I rejoice by revelation. I know I'm coming out all right. How do I know? It don't look like it. I don't hear it. But in my spirit, God has already said, I'm coming out. Oh, I feel your presence tonight, Lord. Just, just wipe us out tonight, Jesus. It, it, it is critical here. It is critical because you would think that Jesus' works, and here's a man walking on water, raising the dead, and Jesus says to the people, you should at least believe me for my work's sake. He then says, whom do men say that I am? And of course, some say you're Jeremiah's Elias and one of the prophets. And, and, and he says, now whom do you say? And Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he says, flesh and blood did not... Mm. Are you with me? <laughs> 
it my father which is in heaven he is the one who reveals it to you in other words you can live your life around a powerhouse child of God and not know what's around you unless God reveals it to you oh I need revelation you can the devil will wipe you out if you don't have revelation in the things of God uh, I'm going there stay with me tonight it, it is critical here because now then God must reveal himself as God and show himself as God in my situations he's got to show himself and in order for him to develop my faith he has to constantly reveal things to me I can't go from faith to faith for the scripture talks about the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith this is why there's a revelation when you receive the Holy Spirit because you believe to receive and then when he speaks through you then you know you have him when I know I have him that's one layer now I'll believe him for something else then when he reveals himself then I reveal believe him for something else so I believe he reveals I believe he reveals the more I believe the more he reveals so as I keep on believing he keeps on revealing until one day I will know him as he knows me oh I feel the presence of God touch your neighbor and say I'm going somewhere yeah. and so it's his consistency in his revelatory expression that strengthens me to greater faith if he then is not faithful and consistent to me then my faith can't grow he has to be faithful to me and dependable and reliable in order to build me into a giant if he is sometimes there and sometimes gone if he's sometimes with me and sometimes against me if I can find him sometimes can't find him other times then I will be wavering in my faith if he's going to make me steadfast he has got to be faithful to me I, I, I hope you're going with me he, he's got to be faithful look over your life and see how many times he brought you out and sometimes we get nervous as if he will not bring us out the next time all I need to do is tap you on your shoulder and tell you look back to the last time and see what he did oh I feel his presence here I, I give you just a little example of it I remember years ago when I was in Longview Texas and I had flown to some place on the way back and and I came back and you know my money was not it was a funny and, and and as I came to get in my car the battery wouldn't work I'm rushing to church and the battery is dead in the Shreveport Airport I said to myself I said now Lord now 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 why now me now everybody else around here they're they're going fishing and uh, and they, they're going to the racetrack and and I'm trying to go to church now what's going on here uh, man, as I spoke a gentleman came and said to me your car won't start I said no it won't he said all right I'll jump it and he, by the way here is a pass you show it to the man and go through now I didn't have much money and the car was there for two weeks the man gave me a pass obliterated all my charges now I'm sitting there arguing with God when he's trying to get me out of the place for nothing oh I wish somebody would talk to me uh, how many times have you been embarrassed because God was trying to reveal himself and you're arguing
arguing about your situation never go by your situation always go by revelation that God will bring you out all right oh touch somebody say he's gonna make you laugh oh, it's here now that God he, he, he has to establish the presupposition for the knowledge of God is the revealing of God by God nobody can make God reveal himself to them he has to choose to invite you into the innermost circle of his revelation and it is revelation that gives you the power over the enemy because revelation brings your faith into manifestation of the thing that your faith reached for and it gives you a sense of assurance that no matter what's going on in the world you are not of the world because you don't walk by the dictates of situation oh I'm talking to some people in here who have been through some stuff and have not been broken because I am not just connected to my world I'm connected to God by faith and no matter how the devil messes with the world I can walk above the world and tell the devil you can't touch me oh I feel God in this place <laughs> It is, it is imperative to understand this because once I begin to enjoy the revelatory experiences of God, then I have now become dual in my representation in my life. There is a part of me that is sensual, that is still connected to my world there's a part of me that is spiritual that is connected to my God now I have to walk in the sensual with the connection to the spiritual that overpowers everything around me this then means that even though I am in time I'm not a creature of time because I have elevated myself above the sensuality of my situation the devil hates that oh I wish I could talk to you here he hates it because he no longer can pull your strings uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. he hates it because he no longer can dictate hate to how your mind ought to think he hates it because he wants you to complain and instead of getting a complaint out of you he gets you rejoicing before God in the spirit and he wishes he could shut your mouth but when God wants you to laugh he'll have you laugh in the devil's face Oh, is a breakthrough coming here tonight. Woo, I feel it. It's critical here because now the revelation then of God, how does it work? Please, how does it work? How do I know it is God? How do I know this is the Lord speaking? Well, one of the things that God does is he makes covenants or agreements. And, and he is the one who initiates the agreement. It comes from him. He is the one who approaches the table, chooses the individual, and says, I want to make an agreement with you. I am going to bless you. Now, I will point out with you, whenever the Lord makes a covenant, there is something lopsided about it. The first thing is, how do you make an agreement with me when you're going to live forever and I'm going to live for a brief period of years? How can you make an agreement with me when I'm going to die and you keep living? Well, the first thing he indicates is it's not just for you, but it's for your posterity and their posterity. Now, let me tell you this. When God makes an agreement with you, he's going to break the generation curse in your life 
and fix it so your children will never have to deal with what your father put on you. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Touch your neighbor and say, if God makes you rich, he's gonna make your children rich and their children rich. When God blesses you, he's gonna bless your children, your children's children, your children's children's children. I feel like shouting here. When God fixes your life, he's going to fix everybody's life around you. Anyhow, it is here now that he, he has to make a covenant and he has to make a promise to you. So now where God is faithful in any promise he has given, he becomes manifest and knowable as God. Oh, I, I, can I take my time with this? Uh, I feel something pushing me, but I'll, I'll try to behave. Anytime, how do I know it's God? The only way to know it's God is for God to say it to me in the midst of circumstances that are totally different from what I'm looking at God now says something to me now you have to understand that the circumstances have to be contradictory completely to what he says because if the circumstances are conducive to what you're seeing in your vision or dreaming in your dream then you cannot identify the vision with anything different than what you're experiencing <laughs> you see what God has to do is God has to come in totally different from what you're going through <laughs> because if he does not you will think that it's what you were going through that led you to where you are <laughs> but no God waits until it's nothing but pure hell then he comes and promises you joy <laughs> you're so caught by it you're saying to yourself who is talking to me I, my mama don't have anything my daddy don't have anything and somebody's telling me I'm about to be blessed now who is this that's talking to me oh I feel God in this place give somebody a high five say God's gonna make you laugh he's gonna he's gonna make you laugh oh you're gonna say you gotta be crazy. oh I, I feel like preaching I, I touch somebody say I need a crazy blessing that's what I need. oh that's what I need that's that's what I need you see, you see yeah, you, he has to be contradistinctive he, he, he just cannot come into your plans he, he, God cannot just come into what you decided to do and then show himself as distinct because if you decided to do it uh, can I take it to another level right here <laughs> There is a difference between you asking God to help you and God recruiting you for his revelation. Oh, there's a difference because you will ask God to help you to do something that is humanly possible. God is going to recruit you to do something that is totally humanly impossible. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. If you want to know where God is moving, he's moving in what most folk think is impossible. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here. And when folk think it's impossible, they'll laugh at you. But God's going to make them laugh with you in a minute. God it is it's the situation then that that makes it God 
because the promise must be distinct from the situation it must be God moving in a way that you're saying you he couldn't be talking to me how could he be talking to me I, I don't have the qualifications I don't have the ability most folk think I'm not going to become anything anyway how could he be talking to me you're the one he wants to talk to he wants to talk to folk who know it couldn't have come from anybody I touch your neighbor say is he talking to you is he talking to you yes he's talking to you the one that they said would never be anything the one that they said could never achieve the one that they said could never be holy never walk with God God runs over and whispers in the night come go with me oh I feel the Holy Spirit in here oh God have mercy it is and sure it is God and so the promise of God has got to rise up in your worst moment oh yeah I, I know it and when he gets ready to give you a promise to distinguish himself so totally he will let the devil have free reign oh yeah but let me tell you this once God makes you a promise the devil can't kill you till it comes to pass because now we find then that the historical action of God within the horizon of the promises of God he promises oh I feel you he speaks it before he changes you he gives you a promise now notice what he does now is then he says he now forces you to look to the future and what he says is don't go by anything in your past because if I'm going to do something new with you it begins with a promise I'll speak it before it happens uh, can I can I take my time with this um, now remember Isaiah for instance and and one of the marvelous things about God and if you're not careful you don't know you you'll forget the placing of Isaiah Isaiah is speaking to Israel before they go into captivity and he's speaking to them about the horrific destruction of the captivity and then he speaks to them about the deliverance now notice he speaks about destruction before destruction and he speaks about deliverance before destruction and he's making a point what he's saying to the children of Israel is when you get into captivity don't be disgusted because I told you you were going in so if you went into destruction and I told you you're coming out you can look at the destruction and begin to praise me for the deliverance because the same God who put you in is the same God that's bringing you out and I am God and beside me there is no other touch your neighbor said I cried yesterday but God's gonna make me laugh <laughs> oh, touch three people say I'm getting ready to laugh I'm getting ready to laugh God showed me some things that's about to take place and I am getting ready to just laugh. I feel the Holy Ghost. Now, now sometimes you cannot allow, you cannot allow and must not allow. You must not allow for God's sake at 
apprehension to overcome anticipation oh must i say that again sometimes we become apprehensive because of what we've been through and many times the things that we've been through have left indelible prints on our minds and it takes the strength of the promise of God and faith in the promise to overcome the negatives of our past touch your neighbor say get over your past touch somebody else say God wasn't with you then touch somebody else and say you didn't have a promise then now 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 can I tell you something the promise now the promise of God blocks the consequences of your past because the consequences come from past actions but the promise of God brings to a halt the consequences of the past and begins to renew your tomorrow so what God says is my promise separates the old you from the new you I don't have to bring it to pass yet and touch your neighbor say you'll always say yet as a child of God do you have the car I don't have it yet do you have the house I don't have it yet do you have a husband I don't have him yet there's always yet because yet says it ain't here but it's on the way and God's gonna make me oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in the house Jesus help us in here somebody's gonna be blessed tonight somebody's gonna have power to walk out of here tonight and tell the devil I'm gonna laugh my way through life future then now 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 the future the future because the promise now oh god i feel it the promise now becomes an announcement the promise is an announcement about my future when i had that dream that vision the other night when i read that scripture that god put on my heart he made an announcement when he called abraham he called him and he made an announcement that i'm going to bless you i'm going to bless those who bless you touch your neighbor say you blessed to sit beside me and you better watch what you say about me because God has announced if you bless me he'll bless you and if you curse me watch out watch out watch your mouth I feel it in here he makes an announcement Woo! I feel the Holy Oh, excuse me, I, I just had a, a little moment with the Lord right through here. He made an announcement. He told you in the middle of the night, I am going to announce your future. Now, future then becomes a reality which fulfills and satisfies the promise. If once he makes an announcement, the devil in hell can't stop it because now notice the elements that go into making the announcement come to pass is nothing but the spirit of the Lord I had no future until God made an announcement and the announcement that he made is about a reality that has not yet come to pass are you with me the promise is as real as my present because all 
all the promise is is an announcement about a future that has not yet come to pass but once God says it the devil can't stop it because no weapon against me I feel them in this place touch somebody and say he's gonna make me laugh touch somebody and say I'm getting ready to laugh Woo, I feel it I feel it I feel it ain't no sadness in here unless you just want to be sad and God's gonna override your sadness and give you a blessing you got to chuckle I'm gonna have some church in here somebody just reach back and slap the devil get out of here I feel like having church I must preach this thing tonight it is important to understand this because now the promise becomes the ground by which God reveals his divinity and shows his power over the enemy if I would point out to you when he promised he would protect Israel in the middle of bitter water he showed himself as Jehovah Jireh now notice now he has to allow the circumstance to make it ripe for the revelation and what God likes is to stack the deck against himself oh God can I come to you and me touch your neighbor and say God stacking the deck against himself I ain't got no cards I ain't got no cards to play God's the one playing the cards so he stacks the deck against himself so he can show me it's not me it's got to be God God's getting ready to give me a blessing that I couldn't get myself I might as well have church here by myself give somebody a high five and say that's a ridiculous blessing there must be promise because it's promise that makes a person live by faith if I don't have promise I can't live by faith and the just shall live by faith so promise now makes faith possible because he promises me I expect it now faith is the hypostasis of things hoped for the evidence or the helicopter of things not seen I don't see it but he promised it I don't see it but he said it would come to pass well since I know him like I do I don't have to see it to begin to praise him for it because if he said it it's got to come to pass I'm standing on it I'm banking on it I'm praying on it and when folk laugh at me I say you ain't gonna have the last laugh because I'll be laughing all the way to the bank I feel a breakthrough I feel a breakthrough oh God now what Paul says now is that works can't do it because God is going to make sure that you understand you didn't work for it shake somebody's hand say you didn't work for it you ain't that good you ain't that powerful because now if I could work for it then it would be wages and if I can earn it it can't be that much because I ain't got that kind of earning power so I want it to be by faith so it is by promise you see it's got to be by faith for it to be by promise if it's by law then it's by works and I don't want to work for it I want a blessing that I can't work for I want a house that I can't work for I want a woman that when I look at her I say glory be to God I feel the Holy Ghost in well, excuse me, that was personal. The challenge is, 
you can't work it out oh god the channel is that of faith and now then how do i receive it if i don't work for it i've got to have a source to get it and the source is faith because faith bridges to god and everything he gives me comes through faith so what god does by faith is he simply asks me to stretch out my hand and receive what he wants to give if i were to bring you a thousand dollars and i were to put it in your hand and you stretch out your hand to get it you didn't work for it you just received it touch three people and say receive it that's all you got to do is receive it mm, receive it receive it he promised it receive it he said he would receive it he turned back heaven receive it he opened up the way receive it that's all you have to do is receive what god has told you he's going to give you i feel it here so now he says let me get somebody as an example so the children of the church will understand how i work he calls a man at 75 years old and he disrupts his life touch your neighbor said the first thing is the vision will disrupt your life god will tell you step out on faith oh god i feel it now step out on faith you've been going by your intellect too long you've been going by your plans too long you've been trying to set up some stuff too long the lord says step out now the lord is the only person i know that'll take a man on a job and have him give up the job to start a church can i preach like i feel it you see that man right there this was a vision but he had a job now the question is do you believe god enough to give up this for what you got in your head oh i feel the holy ghost oh i got to preach this do you have enough nerve for the lord to upset your house and you get up and tell everybody i'm on the way out where you going i don't know where i'm going but i'm going i just heard go lord i feel it in here and i preach like i feel it give somebody a high five and tell them just go honey if god tell you go just go well ain't nobody going with me forget them forget them forget them just go just go just go the man now moves out and i tell you you can be in the will of god and not know where you're going and i understand why god plays like that because if i tell you how to get from here to a spot in fort worth and i give you the directions now most of us if we're going to travel in a caravan we want to know the directions just in case i lose you but now if i don't know the directions i can't afford to lose you so that's the reason god does not show me the whole direction but he gives me little at a time so he won't lose me and i'll keep saying where did god go where did god go where did god go where did god go i got to follow god he knows where the blessing is i got to tell you if you follow god he'll make you laugh mm, i feel the holy ghost it's important to grasp this because now the man is out there now the second thing is he does not move as quick as you feel he should because now he is testing your faith oh I feel it now 
touch your neighbor say I hate to wait oh yeah 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 touch somebody else behind you say I really hate to wait I want it right now but if I get it right now then I would not develop character because my character says I need to be strong enough to wait on God in spite of how long it takes because what God promised me takes a little time to prepare because he ain't given me just anything he's given me the best of everything and he ain't rushing to put it together oh I got to preach in here tonight oh not only that sometimes the gift is too good for the person receiving it can I talk to you a minute you want the best man in town but are you yet the best woman in town it don't make sense for God to give his best to somebody who ain't ready yet so while you're waiting on the gift he's raising your value I got to preach in here God gonna make you laugh God's gonna make you laugh I feel the Holy Spirit so God just held up until Abraham got through his mess he kept on denying Sarah kept on acting like she was his sister and not his wife and God had to bring him through that for him to understand if I promise you a child the devil can't kill you Sarah understood that she was not in the hand of Abraham because when he sent her into Abimelech's bed she just crawled right up in it and just waited for God to deliver in the night and said don't you touch her because she is my anointed child can I preach to you had to get through Hagar get through trying to help God touch three people and say quit trying to help him he knows what you need he knows who you need and he knows when you need it you've messed up picking yourself how many times you've chosen a mess quit choosing and sit down and let somebody choose you Somebody said, God knows how to work it out. Now, he promised a man at 75. And you know that's pretty tough. But it must have been possible. Because at 86, he had a child with Hagar. Which means the record shows he wasn't quite dead enough. Look at your neighbor say, your situation ain't quite dead enough. The devil ain't whooped you quite enough. God is waiting until the jury is out. Until the devil comes back with all of his imps and say it ain't gonna happen. Just like I told you, God waited too long. The man is now a hundred and the woman is 90. Tell somebody Abraham was dead. Tell somebody Sarah was dead. Tell them now they double dead. Now here's where God is getting ready to work because now things have become ridiculous. Touch your neighbor, say, that's ridiculous. Can an old man that old have no baby with an old woman that old? That's ridiculous. So when Sarah heard it, she began to laugh and said, somebody must be crazy because this ain't going to happen. But I heard the Lord say, is there anything too hard for God? Do I have a child of God in here that has 
the nerve to tell your situation there ain't nothing too hard for God. This job is not too hard for God. This house is not too hard for God. This relationship is not too hard for God. This raise is not too hard for God. I want something ridiculous. Can I preach? I'm getting ready to close. But I feel the power of the Lord. Shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, it takes a ridiculous blessing to make you laugh. A baby at 90, fathered at 100, just enough to make you laugh. Can I preach this thing? What? How big is your house? God's going to give you a house so big. When the neighbors walk by, they say, how many people live in this house? And you tell them two. They say, that's ridiculous. I feel like shouting. God's going to give you three or four or five cars. And somebody say, how many cars you have? And you tell them, I got five. And they say, are you by yourself? You say, yes. And they say, that's ridiculous. I feel the Holy Ghost. Touch three people. Say, that's the kind of blessing I got to have. A ridiculous blessing. How much money you got in the bank? Who bless you so quick? Last year you were nothing. This year you're on the mountaintop. Last year you were hurt. This year you got victory. Who did it for you? God did it. That's ridiculous. When you tell them where he's taking you, tell them how high you're going. They look at you like you're crazy and say, that's ridiculous. And you tell them, yeah, that makes me laugh. Somebody touch your neighbor, throw your head back and go to ha ha. I feel the power of God laugh laugh at your enemies laugh laugh at the devil laugh laugh at the opposition laugh laugh at the depression laugh laugh at hell laugh laugh at poverty laugh laugh at sin laugh laugh at defeat laugh laugh and hurt God is blessing ridiculously in Dallas Texas in the house victory in the house shake somebody's hand say you're getting ready to laugh when you walk on the job and they move you a little higher just laugh remember this night God told me to tell you you're gonna laugh all the way to the bank laugh all the way to the altar laugh all the way through heartache through sickness, through pain, through it all. Somebody's gonna look at you and say ridiculous. I wish I had somebody who wanted a ridiculous blessing to jump out of your seat, run down to this altar, and say, I got to have it tonight. A ridiculous move, a move of the Holy Ghost, a move of the power of God. In the name of Jesus, I got to have it tonight. Touch me with your power. Touch me with the Holy Spirit. 
touch me with your strength touch me touch me touch me with salvation somebody said I should be dead but I'm laughing tonight for you made a way out of no way you opened the door that they said would never open they laughed but I'm laughing now they laughed but I'm rejoicing in the power of the Holy Ghost somebody praise him somebody lift him up somebody tell him thank you Jesus somebody I want you to bow your heads all over this building. Your vision. Your vision sustains you. I'm looking at people who have had nothing but vision to sustain them and the word of God if it hadn't been for what he told me I would have lost my mind if it hadn't been for what he said to me in the midst of that trial in the midst of gross tribulation I would have been through I feel you right now as you're standing there and the Lord said, you are going to receive such a ridiculous blessing that you don't have to just sit back and laugh. Sarah said, the Lord hath made me laugh. As you bow your heads around this altar down through the eyes. Somebody here knows how things have slipped out of your control. And what happens now is what was difficult has now become literally impossible. And this is where God makes you laugh. Because he is stepping in right now to bring a revelation of himself to you because you already have the promise don't let the promise slip because the promise is your future and I'm excited about your future because you're going to give birth to laughter Isaac's name means laughter which means the laughter will not just be for a moment but the laughter will continue as long as you lay your eyes on what God has birthed in your spirit in the name of Jesus I feel his presence resting on you right now. I feel him slipping in between all of the pain. I feel him moving in against all of the fear. In the name of Jesus, I see him moving in against all of your defeat. And he's breaking up the spirit of failure. I see him bringing down the high places in the name of Jesus mm. oh yes oh yes oh yes 
the unction has begun the, the trembling in your spirit oh yes oh yes oh yes the breakdown the breakdown in the name of Jesus oh the Holy Spirit is getting ready to fall uh, somebody's getting ready to receive a new lease a new lease a new touch somebody's getting ready to be revived in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus faith is touching God right now the Holy Spirit is saying somebody touch me somebody touch me it's a lot of folk in this altar but somebody somebody touch me oh hallelujah hallelujah virtue is going out of him somebody's holding on to him don't let him go right now hold on to him now in the name of Jesus I pray for every soul that's standing at this altar of blessing I feel and see the outpouring of victory the outpouring of direction the outpouring of strength the outpouring of anointing and I thank you for it right now somebody's getting ready to laugh before they walk out the door laughing in the Holy Spirit because the door has been opened the way has been made the revelation has been given in the name of Jesus the blood is against you Satan you miss my brother when you had him and you can't get him back because God told me to tell you that weeping may endure for a night but Satan you lost your hold send a mighty move of the Holy Spirit and fill the people with your power in the name of Jesus send a mighty move of your anointing and destroy the yokes right now in the name of Jesus it's done for Nancy it's done for Harold Harry got a touch you're moving now sickness is being healed bank is being delivered finance is being restored marriage is being lifted we get ready to laugh laugh at the devil who said it would never happen and I 